Well, MJF comes out for a promo. And maybe he should have just not been on the show at all, selling his neck. But he was selling his neck. Well, the fact is he should have been out selling his neck, but there's a pay-per-view next week. Well, that's true. Did nobody realize how stupid this was? How did Jungle Boy know that he was going to not retire? How did Jungle Boy know he was going to issue an open challenge? How did Jungle Boy, in advance, tape this promo to interact with a man live in the ring as he snuck in the ring on the other side? Well, I know it's fake Spartan Sprinkles. You don't have to make it more fake. Vinny is still in the UK as we speak. Well, we got a lot going on. What's happening, Granny? Well, we got a lot going on. What's happening, Every time, every time my YouTube on this other computer, like, resets the mute. I go to another country, I come back, it's unmuted. Every single time. It's much, much nicer here than it was in London. Oh, really? I heard we it rain. got drenched. My feet, my shoes were absolutely soaked. Soaked! Favorite Sid memories. Back in the early mid-2000s, I met Sid in a sketchy part of Memphis, and I got an autograph and point to the area. He pointed to his area? What? That he was looking to acquire in, aha, from his plug. From his plug? Which was an old classmate from high school. I don't understand any of that. Sid was in the ring, and this guy... Hawked a loogie that flew all the way across the ring, over the wow. top rope, over the padded area, over the railing, and hit me in the third row. Wow. There's this kid, scrawny, nerdy, and he yells at Sid, why did you stab Marty Lundy? Yes. Well, it was Brent. <laughs> it was Brent Kremen. Sid turns around, and all of a sudden this... Nerdy kid hurls a full soda at Sid's back and That's it explodes. Right. That's right. I forgot about it that. It explodes all over the place. So Sid turns around and calmly walks over to this tiny little woman security guard, points at Brent, and then gives the old heave ho sign. So this tiny little security guard escorted Brent out of the Tacoma Dome. And that was the story of Brent Kremen. Mostly Sid, but Brent Kremen. I, I did get an explanation from John. Okay. Sid was looking for an old classmate who was a weed dealer, and uh. I gave him directions, and he gave me an autograph. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, what's happening? Oh, she opened oh, she up opened her, her thing, her so she froze again. This is a regular thing here on this program. 11-3-1950. What? what? Gorgeous George versus Hans Snub. Snubble. That was <laughs> Got it. Nice. All right. Gorgeous George comes out with blonde curly hair and in a fancy pink robe. Was this in black and white or color? Oh, black, black and, and white for black sure. Well, she said he was wearing a pink robe. Yeah, how'd you know it was a pink robe? That's a good question, Sean. Because the announcer said it. Oh, oh okay. he got us there. Uh, how about London? I could like to hear about London. Did you bring some extra shoes? I'm here trying to tell you about London, and you're making fun of me getting soaked? <laughs> Why would I bring a second pair of shoes? Bradley brings a second pair of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get out of here, Granny. I'll see you next week. So last week we were talking about this Brad Armstrong, and, you know, what is what does Lance text me? I like Brad Armstrong. I told Lance to text you. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I said it on the I, show, I Brian. I like... I don't hate I, Brad Armstrong. I was just so fucking work. bored. Lance, will you send a strongly worded letter Lance to Lance will agree with me. <laughs> there were now, more fucking if, arm bars in this match than the goddamn Gracie's in action one and two. I don't want to tell you that. Oh, stop it. I know he's you a, fast forwarded through this match. He's a There's great There's no wrestler. way you sat through this fucking boring oh ass arm bar match. Misty Blue and Linda Dallas, you could not have aired that match on Netflix, I don't think. Fair. In 2024. Misty Blue is wearing this outfit. It's practically a thong. One of them used the octopus hold. Right. And they have to blur out a vagina. How did this air? How? And we are joined today by Lisa Gibbard, who has not been here for a long time. Where have you been? Where have I been? I have been working and hanging out with you in London, of course. That's right. Yes, it was fun. It was it's fun, awesome. right? London was fun. Yes. Sometimes I have to have these things confirmed. Anything you want to say about uh, All In, Vinny? The main event. As far as people living and dying with every near fall, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. 
because they believed Brian Danielson might win the world title. They also believed Swerve might pin him and Danielson might retire. <laughs> yeah, because Danielson did a tremendous job convincing you he didn't care about this. Oh, well, yeah. And he was fine retiring forever. It was a very odd way to book that, but yeah, it was a great match. We watched AEW Dynamite August 28th, 2024. Moxley warns Shivani sternly, this is not your company anymore. Shivani the Avatar for Khan? He might be. This felt like a heel turn, or at least the start of one. Felt like he was breaking away from the BCC, but we don't know that because I don't know what's up with the BCC at the time. Anyway. Yeah. Hangman Page versus Tomohiro Ishii. They had a Big Ish Tom. Big Tom, and a Ishii match if ever I've seen one. Well, this is one of the best Dynamite matches I've seen in I don't even know how long. I love this match so much. It had the greatest DDT ever in the oh, history yeah. of wrestling. I don't know how he did it. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> the closest I've seen is when uh, Rob Van Dam used to take the pile driver and bounce 10 feet in the air. That was like the best pile driver. But as far as a DDT, I have never, ever seen a better DDT. I thought this uh, promo by Swerve was awesome. My only issue, and it is a constant issue in AEW, is this guy just lost a world title at All In, and he mentioned it, but really the whole promo was like, moving on. He promised to get it back, but he's got to deal with Hangman first. I guess. I mean, Brian offered an open challenge at the end of the show and Swerve didn't come out. Well, that's true. Was, well, I don't know what he was doing. He's dealing with Hangman first. Mm. This is not the same as when Samoa Joe lost the world title and disappeared. Well, he never mentioned it again. Yes. That was worse. He, he forgot his own title. That right. doesn't necessarily mean that this was a great follow-up to him losing the title to Brian Danielson. Well, MJF comes out for a promo. And maybe he should have just not been on the show at all, selling his neck. But he was selling his neck. Well, the fact is he should have been out selling his neck, but there's a pay-per-view next week. Well, that's true. So that made that impossible. He lost his ring. He lost his championship. It's he true, by the way. So he stole his ring? Yeah. Well, it just vanished. Yeah. It probably was stolen. It was London. Garcia attacks him from behind. Very quickly chokes him out. He pawned the ring in Buffalo so he could get a round trip to London to ruin Max's night. Yes. That's what he claimed. Yeah. It's Roddy versus Hook based off Hook submitting Roddy. People are like, well, his foot was under the ropes. I don't give a fuck. He gave up. He was choked out. He gave up to the man's hold. How is he getting a championship match? I was baffled. Baffled watching this. But it was a fun match. Shivani interviews Mariah May. Says her championship celebration has been postponed. Runs down champagne. They're champagne of the noise. She says it should be renamed to Flat Stale Piss Warm Beer. And many fans cheered. Yeah. I laughed. That was great. Ricochet versus Kyle Fletcher. Now, you could argue... That Ricochet's debut should not have been a banger. That should have been a quick dominant. This is what they do, bro. Win, but it is what they do every single time. Do you realize that Kyle Fletcher has lost every single solitary singles match that he has had in this company since October, with one exception, which was Brian Cage to set up his match with MJF, which he shined in and had a great, you know, he came off like a superstar, and now he's losing again. Yeah. And do you know who he beat in October the last time he won a singles match? Was it Brian Cage? Boulder! Oh. <laughs> so, no, it's, uh, the fuck are we doing here? Did nobody realize how stupid this was? How did Jungle Boy know that he was going to not retire? How did Jungle Boy know he was going to issue an open challenge? How did Jungle Boy, in advance, tape this promo to interact with a man live in the ring as he snuck in the ring on the other side? Well, I know it's fake, Spartan Sprinkles. You don't have to make it more fake. The segment was great, if you don't think about it too deeply. Well, I do. It works. That's the problem. I know. We must constantly talk about NIL deals, mm. talk about everybody's athletic background, yeah. talk about the sport they excelled in, yeah. the college they went to, and like, I'm fucking sick of it. I was like, Vic, shut the fuck up, dude. I got it. She played fucking basketball. The fuck does that have to do with wrestling? Nothing. Can you imagine if like we, we had uh, Lisa here on the show and she spent half the show like... Just talking about what a great mechanic she was or something. I mean, what? What does that have to do with anything? You can play basketball? I don't give a shit. What does that have to do with wrestling? Oh, my! I have a background in uh, the 100 meter dash. Wow. What the fuck does that have to do with wrestling? Can you beat Roxanne in a match or what? I have a background in soccer. Well, do you do soccer kicks? I've never seen any. Who gives a shit what they do in their athletic background? I just want to know if they can wrestle or not. Apologize.
Karim Petrovich versus Izzy Dame. This is bad. I am usually not a fan of these face-to-face -face promos where matches have already been booked and there's no point to them. This one was great. Zachary Wentz in particular was spectacular here. Wes insists that Zach's not in his level. He's a WWE superstar, not just a TNA wrestler. And Zach finally just vows to beat his ass. And they're snarling each other, spitting each other, and security there to hold them back. I thought this whole segment was great. And like I say, Zach was a star here. It was tremendous. Yeah. I hope TNA are getting something from this deal because to bring someone out and then just say, hey, you're just a TNA wrestler, that was... That struck me as weird. Joe Coffey pins Javon Evans. I don't have the energy this late in the show. Yesterday's Observer Live, I went on and on. And all I have to hear from these fuckers is, he's going to be fine. He's only 21. He'll be fine. It's fine. The goal of booking is not to achieve fine. The goal of booking is to get a guy who's not over over. And if you have a guy who's already fucking over... You don't have to try to get him over because he's already over. You took a guy who was over, you booked him to get over, and you got him under. So, fuck. I guess I did have the energy. Tony D is at his restaurant. I apologize, Lisa. <laughs> for what? Just in general? Raising my for voice. Making, for watching NXT. Yes. Every one of his feuds is exactly the same. He is pinned repeatedly by yes. his opponent. I don't think uh, Joe Hendry is winning the title. May as well. I mean, give TNA something. You'll lose it again at some point, but... That last segment was really good. I thought that last segment was really good. Show picked up with the uh, second half there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. last segment was awesome. It ended the show on high. It was great. <laughs>